Grid CN27, which lies just 100 kilometers west of Malta, will continue to be U-75's hunting grounds for a further 36 hours. Thus far, these waters have been quite accommodating of our presence. Only a couple of aircraft have been sighted. Much of this has to do with the battering Malta has been taking. In the last month of April, the RAF has lost over 120 aircraft over the isolated Allied outpost. Meanwhile, supply has been flowing to Rommel's Africa Corps relatively unscathed. The situation for the Tommies is getting desperate. It seems I may have spoken a tad too soon. Out of the clouds at 10 in the morning, a single hurricane dove upon us, flashes twinkling from the wings. U-75 submerged rapidly, taking no serious damage. Just some superficial damage to the boat's deck. We will stay submerged for a few hours before surfacing once again. U-75's time near Malta has come to an end, and now the boat is on a heading of 270 towards the western Mediterranean. Our new patrol grid is CH-82, just off the coast of Algeria. These should be good waters to hunt in, as we can catch traffic going in and out of the Mediterranean. It seems U-75 is vacating the waters near Malta at just the right time. The RAF's tempo has upticked significantly, and U-75 has had to crash dive twice in a four-hour period. Needless to say, U-75 will be spending the remainder of May 4th submerged. After eight uneventful hours submerged, the order was given to surface the boat. With the limited hours of light available, the crew quickly got to work patching up the torn up wooden deck. One RAF aircraft managed to score a few hits with their guns. Thankfully, the damage is just cosmetic. Another battle scar for U-75. The night was quiet, and the two manned diesel engines hammered away as the watch peered into the inky abyss. At 0600, Whispers came from the bridge, a large object sighted closing in on us. Hello everybody, Wolf back here and welcome back aboard the bridge of U-75. We have a ship that we have just sighted and you can see it right there off to 020 degrees. It looks like it may be armed, although it is rather hard to tell right now. I am going to adjust our course. New heading 330. And let's bring up the Uzo. The Uzo has a much better magnification. So it is possible that we will be able to make out any guns on the ship. There she is. Okay, it's actually kind of hard to tell. It is Greek. Greek flagged. It's probably free Greek, I would think. I believe it is free game. It also does look like it has some sort of razzle-dazzle camouflage. I honestly do not see any guns. Maybe one gun amidships there. Reduce speed, all ahead slow. Slow it up. 
Deine Fahrt voraus. Let's see, what do I have loaded? All G70 torpedoes. Just trying to get a good look. There may be guns on the rear. That that very well may be like a 20 millimeter cannon or something. Really difficult to tell. Deck gun, make sure you're holding fire. Man the guns, please. Deck gun and flat guns, just in case. Black guns will fire at well. I'm gonna use the deck gun. This may be a horrible idea. Let's turn around the first things first and start moving away from our freighter friend. And then we will open fire on the target. That definitely looks like a gun to me. Which I do not like. We can try to take out the guns. I suppose. How far are we from this ship? She's pretty darn close. 2,000 meters. I do like her camouflage, though. I love Razzle Dazzle. Okay, yeah, it looks like some sort of... Definitely guns on there. Alright, increase speed to full. Get ready to engage. Hopefully she doesn't see us picking up speed. I suppose if she does shoot at us, we will know if she is friend or foe. Okay, we should be good. Rudder amidships. Alright. Gun crew. Let's ja, slow up. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Open fire. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Definitely have guns there. Gun on the rear, possibly. Alright, boys. Well, pump a star shell over her first. We need to also adjust ja, course slightly. Illuminate the target. Alright, send it. Load high explosive. Ship is unresponsive. Okay, rounds are flying out. It looks like one's going to land just aft and long. I am worried. There we go. Hit. Blew up a gun platform by the looks of things. Beautiful. That's what I like to see. Target is not re-engaging. She is zigzagging, though. There we go. Another good hit by the gun crew. Rudder yeah, amidships. Alright, gun crew. Aim for waterline. I think we are out of range of her other cannons here. And I'm going to have my men begin aiming for the waterline at this point. The freighter is up and smoke, and the deck gun crew is really just getting hit after hit at this point. They are quite effective. Let me check who's on the gun. Okay, I'm just making sure our gunner, Rudy here, is actually manning the gun, getting some secondary explosions on the freighter. Splashes around it. Burning through quite a bit of deck gun ammunition, but that's okay. It's very rare we actually get an opportunity to use the deck gun in the Mediterranean here. 
I think we also got lucky. I'm not sure if this was a high caliber gun on the rear or if it was just another anti-aircraft gun, but I don't really want to find out, frankly. And I see quite a few holes on the ship's water line as well. Could probably hold fire and move out, but I want to sink it and get out of here as quickly as possible. I'm sure the ship has radioed in our position. So we will increase speed to standard once we are finished with her and get the heck out of Dodge. And you know what? I will go ahead and take over for just a little bit. What is, okay, 3,200 meters. We'll go to 31, just so we can get the water line there. And short, okay, up. Sending it. And it does look like this ship has a large crane on the stern, and that was over that time, which is quite cool. We can see all that white steam coming out of the boiler room. It's taking on water rapidly, I think. It already looks lower in the water than it was when we first made contact. But like I said, we want to keep firing our 88 here and sending as many rounds into the target because the large fire may attract some unwanted attention. It looks like the fire is just building at this point. Wow, that was one heck of an explosion. I am going to take a guess and say that ship was carrying some ammunition. We broke her back, she split in half and is now going down to the bottom. Let's take a look. Okay, indeed, it was a valid target. Figured so. We will continue on our merry way then after sinking our second freighter of the patrol. U-75 has finally made it to our assigned patrol area. After engaging the lone vessel, the remainder of the trek was uneventful. The boat will patrol CH-82 for two days before repositioning closer to Gibraltar. The weather decayed as U-75 pushed closer and closer to Gibraltar. Still, nothing has been detected. Well, that is until the early morning hours of May 9th. Well, the watch crew has reported a ship spotted bearing 059 somewhere. Yep, there she is. And it looks rather large. However, it does seem like it is indeed illuminated, which is a pretty good sign that it is in fact a neutral vessel. Let's bring up the Uzo and yeah, take a look. Alloy. Looks like a storm is about to break out here as well which is really fun. We haven't seen a single thing since pushing deeper and deeper into the Western Mediterranean. Indeed, that is definitely a neutral troop transport. Let's turn to investigate it. New heading 220, please. See what's going on here. You can see we are in grid CH-76, pushing closer and closer to Gibraltar. I think we will post up in CH-74 relatively soon. And we'll see how bad air cover is in that area. I'm sure it's going to be relatively rough. 
Yeah, I can't make out the flag on the ship. I'm guessing, I mean, honestly, it could be any number of countries, but I'm guessing it's probably Spanish. Yep, I can kind of make out the flag through the smoke here. Indeed, that is a Spanish flagged vessel. So, of course, we are not going to engage it. It is interesting to see, see her out here, though. Quite a shame. I was a little suspicious, once again, once we figured out it was a single ship. Let's continue on our original course. And uh, keep heading towards CH-75 and inching closer and closer to Gibraltar. High speed screws detected bearing 310 degrees, long range. As nothing of note has been detected for a few days, the crew was eager to see some action. The chances of catching up to whatever this sound contact is are slim, however, but we will still try. Ship spotted apparently bearing 0 to 8 degrees. Let's take a look at what it could be 0 to 8. Okay, wow. That is a destroyer. Merging through the fog, it is quite foggy. Let's get a proper weather report before yeah, we move any closer. Okay, wind speed nine meters per second. Good to know. Okay, I just have that lone destroyer right there. Oh boy. Scan left now. Anything? Okay, I have something there. I can't really make it out, although through the fog, I may see two smokestacks here. That obviously is our target. A troop transport, a liner of some sort. And I see a mast right here. Very distant, very hard to see. So I have three ships, one large, what looks to be a liner of some sort and two warships, I'm assuming, escorting it. Let's take a look at the recognition manual just real fast. Two long, narrow stacks. Hmm. Hosp <laughs> it could be a hospital ship very well. Probably nothing this big, though. The stacks are pretty narrow and thin. And maybe another one of these small ocean liners. That would be possible. As being used as a troop transport. I'm going to... It, it very well could be that. We'll see as we get closer, though. All three ships are starting to come into view now. That's definitely another warship in the lead. That is our liner friend, troop transport. I think it actually probably is this. Let's recognize it as such. Length is 171 meters, draft 8.6 meters. What do I have loaded? All G7E torpedoes, all T2s. We are going to shoot a salvo of two torpedoes, shoot tubes one and three, magnetic pistols for both draft for both is going to be nine meters that should be sufficient to avoid slamming into a wave and causing issues that frigate was that a black swan no i don't think it's actually a black swan class frigate but she is getting relatively close and she is turning towards us let's turn away oh gosh and this is exactly what i'm worried about if this warship happens to have radar we may have a few issues. Turn away. Yeah, it's not a black swan actually. Could be a river class. And I am worried we are pushing flank speed here. The waves are certainly slowing us down, but I do not want to cause my diesel engines to break. 
problem is these ships are moving pretty quick i was going at 14 knots earlier and catching them was uh quite the challenge so i'm guessing these ships are going around 12 to 13 knots And really, all we need now is some RAF aircraft to show up and really cause issues for me. Okay, it, it looks like that was a false alarm. I don't think this frigate was actually turning towards us. We're going to continue to run parallel and maybe put some more distance between us. We're getting a little close for comfort. But the goal is to overtake the lead warship and move into position and lay and wait. Of course, this process may take a while, especially in these heavy seas. As you can hear, our diesels are having some trouble. We'll go back down to full speed and continue to watch our prey. The rear escort has done a complete 180. She is now turning away. Yeah, she is showing us her stern now. It looks like she's probably conducting a ASW search pattern. I'm not too concerned about it now. We are slowly but surely overtaking our ocean liner friend. They are pretty far out there. Maybe we are a little close for comfort. Let's take a look through the Uzo. At the lead escort, and there she is. Okay, let's adjust course slightly, please. The last thing I want is to be spotted and fired upon. And it does look like this troop transport is armed. I see a gun up there. At least one gun, probably more. Probably more guns. So that is a lot of firepower. That could be turned our direction if we are caught with our pants down on the surface. Aircraft spotted. Bearing 316. Coming in. Crash dive. Don't mess around with that. Dive, dive, dive. Of course. I knew it was only a matter of time. This heading south. So this is going to put us back a little bit. Okay, we are down. Reduce speed. And now we wait for the incoming depth charges that I'm sh I am sure are going to land on top of us. I heard an aircraft being shot at. I heard lots of gunfire, and there we go. It looks like an FW-200 Condor is engaging the troop transports, and look, it is leaking from its right wing there and taking lots of anti-aircraft fire now from the formation down below. That is awesome. I automatically assumed that the aircraft would have been an enemy. However, it looks like the Luftwaffe has shown up, which is quite sweet. In that case, we may have more strikes on this task force in the near future. It looks like this Condor is trying to get the heck out of Dodge. I can see Tracer Fire whizzing past it now. Yep, there she goes. Definitely a Condor. Well, seeing as... 
the enemy is definitely on alert now. I'm going to stay submerged for a little bit longer before surfacing, probably about 15 or so minutes, then we will surface and continue the chase. That was quite exciting. That is for sure. Hopefully more aircraft show up to bombard these warships. We have passed the lead warship at this point. The rear warship is fading into the fog. I can't even see her anymore. So we are almost there and it's almost time to cut in and start closing the gap. We are still around 10 kilometers away from the targets. I am just going to fire two torpedoes at the liner and then try to disengage as quickly as possible. The waters here are quite deep, which will help us escape along with the weather. No more aircraft have been sighted. It is 1324 local time. We have closed in significantly. The lead escort was doing an ASW search. She is now turning around and heading back for the troop transport. So she is putting more distance between us and them. As of now, U-75 is around three kilometers away from the task force's track. They are heading on a course of 071 degrees. And here we are nice and close to their track. So if we submerge, we'll definitely be able to close in sufficiently. You know what? I'm just going to do it now. Down to periscope depth, please. Okay, we are very close to the warships now. They are crossing pretty much right in front of us. U-75 is rigged for silent running. We are still operating at periscope depth. Periscope's down, running at below two knots here. And our friend is off to 352, moving fast and closing. Um, I do not like the sound of that. It is possible she is starting to conduct her ASW search pattern. Let's just take a look. Let's see, 351, upscope. Okay, it's she's actually... Okay, she is in fact closing. That is an accurate assessment. Don't think she's picked this up, however. I think this is just standard operating procedure here. She's just zigzagging about. Come on, swing around, swing around. No ASDIC yet, which is reassuring. Yeah, I think this is routine. And she's swinging wide to starboard, continuing her turn. That was lightning that illuminated her. I thought it was a star shell for a second. My heart skipped a beat. <laughs> Okay, and she is going to continue moving away. Yeah, she's continuing her starboard turn. Perfect. Okay, she does not suspect us. Alrighty, folks, we are about to get our target speed here. Let's get ready to start our stopwatch. And start. There we go. Time is running. Time is running. Let's see, 171. Gotta recognize where that is around right here. Let's see how many seconds it's going to be. Probably around 30. Go ahead and bring it to 171. 
Oh, it's definitely going to be less than that. Considering the target speed. We'll see, though. Maybe she is going slower than I originally anticipated. 35. Stop. Okay, so 39 seconds. Okay, bringing 39 to 171, I'm getting around 8.5 knots. Lock on, 8.5, hard to port, hard to port. All right, 8.5, we are going to shoot a two degree spread here, magnetic pistol. Draft on both torpedoes is going to be nine and a half meters. Keep swinging around, keep swinging around. Get this out of the way. Recognize her as such again. Increase our speed. We gotta swing around quickly, please. Just check, double checking my work here, bringing 39 to 171. 8.5. Yeah, good enough. And this is wrong. There we go. Set. Rotor midships. There we go. We should steady up. Bring up the attack disc real quick. Okay, the ships are heading 071 degrees. That is their course. 071. Angle on bow currently is... 70. Do more 80 block. Are we studied up? Studied up. Open tubes. One and three. One and three. Los. They spotted our scope. Fire. Down scope, down to 60. We got her. She is going down. Now it's time for U-75 to get the heck out of here. Der Feind hat uns in der Ordnung, Herr Kaloin. Wann ist das endlich vorbei? It is now the Tommy's turn to have their revenge. They picked us up almost immediately on Asdic. We need to move a little quicker. All ahead full. Oh boy, passing 70 meters. All right, boys, get ready to fight damage. This is fine. This is fine. She is getting close and loud. All right. Hydrophone operator. Follow her. 084. Zero eight eight. Okay. Is she rolling? I don't even know how fast or how close she is at this point. Let's listen. Passing behind us, good. Slowing up. She's above us. You can also hear the freighter breaking apart. Those are depth charges. I wasn't informed that she rolled. It could also be the freighter exploding. Really hard to tell. Yeah, 
Decoy. Change course. You heading one two zero. Okay. The warship just passed right over us. We are moving again. Hard to starboard. Drop. Shit. That was close. Rattled. Yeah, damage, damage, damage. Damage control. Secure from silent running. Get up there. Okay, minor, minor, minor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get up there, buddy. Minor damage, minor damage. Okay. Starboard propeller damaged. Okay, all electric motors damaged. Reduce speed. Another decoy here. Pop it. Deeper, 140 meters, please. been rolled near us all ahead flank all ahead flank uh we are in danger depth jar or decoy again please those are aft of us <sighs> go deeper 160 meters please man what a pattern They are not messing around, that is for sure. Okay, let's take a look at the situation. I kind of want to keep heading south. I think that's our best bet. Change course, new heading, 200. Keep sprinting. We'll sprint for 20 seconds. And then quit. Damage. It's gonna take a little while to repair that. That's all right though. Decks all torn up as well. Not entirely surprising. Okay. Reduce speed. Down to 50 RPM. We are closing critical depth. You know what? Rick for silent running. We will repair this damage later. It is not critical. It does not need to be repaired right this second. So let's hold off on repairs for the time being and just lay low. It's been around 15 or so minutes. The two destroyers are still rolling large patterns just to the north of our position as we slink away. I think we are in the clear. 
I also think at a depth of 180 meters, we are below the thermal layer, which is helping us get out of here. At this point, I am pretty confident that we are going to escape the situation. Once we are a sufficient distance away, we will begin repairing our electric motors. Anyway, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all on the next one.